And now, a special presentation to celebrate the 20th anniversary of Greece. What'd you do this summer, Sandy? Oh, I spent most of it at the beach. I met a boy there. I think Greece has a timeless quality. There was just this magical quality in this movie that's made it last for so long. Sandy! Tony! I feel a part of history. I don't know if I would trade Greece with anything. Some loving had me a blast. We thought we were just doing a little musical for teenagers, and nobody felt that this was going to be a huge hit. It had all this energy to it. It was every fantasy I've ever had, having grown up with movie musicals. You know, it really wasn't like work. Everybody loved being there. There was such a sense of style and color. We actually stayed in character all day long. Hi, Frenchie. We'd call each other by our characters' names, and we would sing a lot of old 50s songs. Making this movie was like being the president of your class in high school. It was a big party from the very first day until it ended. It wasn't so rough having to kiss John Travolta, but having to do it in front of the crew, that was new for me. Hey, there's Danny! Danny! I always wanted to play Danny. When I was a kid and I saw the play, I love the idea of the greasers and the preppy people or the jock people. I like the differences and I like the so-called coolness that the greasers had. I mean, you know how it is, rocking and rolling. So I identify with that. Oh! What'd I do? I never went to a school like that. I went to an Australian school where we all wear uniforms and the school was divided, so the boys had an entrance and the girls had an entrance. I mean, it was just so opposite. So for me, it was like, yay, you know, I was breaking out and kind of living the school experience I'd never had. Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to what we're sure will be our greatest year at Rydell. Greece just had this really fun kind of feeling from the beginning, from going to costume fittings and trying on poodle skirts. Do I look okay, Frenchie? No, oh, you look good. The first day we started, we didn't have a rehearsal or a read-through. We had a sock hop. They pulled us all in together, and we all had to, like, uh, sink or swim, and we'd have a lot of, you know, circle dances and this and that and the other. There was a high school sensibility about the whole production. Jan, that is so adolescent! Oh, we are adolescent! The cast was always joking around and playing tricks. <laughs> and it was a very up kind of atmosphere making the film. Hey, Sandy, would you like me to pierce your ears for you? It was like we just took all our high school experiences. <laughs> and put them all together in this one really fun-filled summer. I had the history with the Broadway show. When I did the play, I got to do Duty, which is a, a, a smaller character and a more innocent, naive character. And I always wanted to play Danny, but I wasn't old enough yet in the play to do that. He had this charisma, and he knew that character inside out from being in the show and knowing about the show, and of course being able to dance, which people love to see him do. I think he was the best daddy Zuko we could have had. He was just blossoming at that moment for the first time, and he had so much youthful energy and sex appeal and warmth. Oh, come on, Sandy, don't make me laugh. Ha, ha, ha. John was playing supposedly this tough guy, but he has this sweetness that comes through no matter what he plays. The first time I really met him was when he came to my house, and he was very cute. That was my first impression. <laughs> At that time, and Olivia had already been a star for about five years, every guy's dream was to have Olivia Newton-John as their girlfriend. And I'll tell you, I was the same way. No, I'm just a fool who's willing to sit around and wait for you. John always liked the idea of Olivia Newton-John. And we approached her, and she was hesitant because she didn't know if she could do it. She didn't know if she'd be, feel comfortable with me, with John. 
and so she asked to have a screen test. I had bad luck with acting. <laughs> I did it at school, and I was president of the drama club, and I had made a really bad movie in England, and I was really shy about making a film again, so I said, yes, I'd be interested, but I really would like to do a screen test to see if I'm any good, and to see <laughs> if um, the casting with the male lead is gonna work. And the first day that John and she were together, we did a test of the scene in the drive-in, and John was real, real great with her, and I think that's what uh, came across, uh, the chemistry that developed. Danny, what are you doing? I just want a little privacy for us, all right? This role appealed to me because I got to play very sweet Sandy 1, a really bad Sandy 2, as I call her. And a little, a little nervous of that, though, because it was really, you know, something I'd never done before. Sandy? I love the other one that I want, because then I was getting to be somebody totally different than I'd been for the whole movie. Tell me about it, stud. And it was just a great song. You could just hear it right away as soon as that dun, 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 dun thing started. It was, it was a hit. You better shape up. We went to wardrobe and I think we decided on black. They found these pants that were really from the 50s and I was sewn into them in the morning because the zip was broken. And my always thought was, what if I need to pee? What am I gonna do? I'm totally sewn into these pants so I couldn't drink. It was very funny. So I got dressed in the outfit that we'd chosen and went out around the crew. She came to show me the makeup and hair that she had come up with for that character at the end. And everybody, all the crew, just became like wolves. They all came around her. And she was so sexy, and everybody was reacting to her completely differently. It was very freeing, and it was really fun, and I got to act and, and really act out. And I hear later that the girls wanted the outfit. <laughs> the guys liked the outfit, so I thought, well... We wanted a supporting cast with a lot of chemistry. The big choice is the casting, who you pick. Once you pick them, that's like 90%. Hey, where well you at? <laughs> We're right here. <laughs> where were you all summer? Yeah. What are you, my mother? Jeff Conway was from the, from the Broadway show and the choreographer was a big fan of his. And we saw him and he was a great foil for John. Uh, how you doing, Zook, huh? They really liked each other and uh, you could see it. They have real camaraderie. Well, here we are again. Yeah, but this time we're seniors. And we're gonna rule the school. <laughs> <laughs> we looked at a lot of girls for the Pink Ladies and Rizzo. Stocker Channing just came in to see us and she was dressed for the part and she was sensational. She just walked through the door and that was it. Somebody snaking you, Danny? Oh, bite the weenie, Riz. With relish. Wow. What? We had some very good people up for Frenchie's part. Your hair looks like an Easter egg. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I had a little trouble in tinting class. And Dee Dee came in and with that voice and that personality, I mean, it was hers. Booty, how do I look? Like a beautiful blonde pineapple. I wanted the characters to have a looseness, not just saying dialogue, and so I, I did pay attention to any chemistry that was starting to develop to see if I could work it out. Randall was great. He had a real sensitive way of dealing with the actors and a real eye for what they were bringing to it. Oh, Randall is our best audience. He'd encourage us to do whatever we wanted, you know, and then he'd say, no. Oh, good, great, okay, keep it. No, uh, uh, no, and then he'd, yeah, great. <laughs> so we were very, very supported by him. We had a good time. I mean, we, we, had a, we all had a good time, I think, in this movie. I got so many hickeys, people think I'm a leper. Cheer up. Uh, hickey from Kanicki's like a Hallmark car. Jeff insisted that when I had a hickey from Kanicki, that he give it to me himself. <laughs> I think that pretty much sums it up. One of the things that the three supporting guys brought to me was the Three Stooges routine. I love the Three Stooges, and I said, can you guys work out something like this? And then they went away and came back and said, what about this? <laughs> and we would do it that way. Guys, be cool, huh? And those three guys, by the way, were constantly coming up with ad-libs. Much of that is not in the script. Hey, Danny, what's up? You still think about that chick? John and I, we were pretty tight, you know, and, and we were together most of the time. And we'd use that time 
say, what can we do with this scene? You know, how can we spice this one up? You remember the, the, the drive-in the other night? We went and, and the movie, and it was like the duel, and the guy's best friend went with him, and, and, and like it was, it was like his lieutenant, like his second, you know? That scene, just waiting for the race to begin, where I asked Danny to be my second, wasn't working for me. And I, so I think I got this idea for the scene. And I thought, you know, this is really one guy saying, hey, I'm a little scared, you know, like anything goes wrong, would you be there for me? I thought that you could maybe be my second at Thunder Road. And I thought, well, how do you do that? How do you physicalize that? I thought, well, after he says yes, you know, you hug. You hug in the 50s, two guys hugging. Forget about it, right? <laughs> Forget about it. <laughs> and I thought, well, oh, I know. They just break apart and they comb their hair and they go, that's cool, man. You know, right, right. Like it didn't happen. <laughs> and it went into the movie. I'll pick you up at three, huh? Yeah. OK, cats, throw your mittens around your kittens and away we go! Grease. It couldn't have happened without rock and roll. You know, that was the driving force. There hadn't been a big musical done in a long time, and every day was like some kind of event, seeing the musical numbers being filmed. Nobody can imagine how dynamic it feels to, to be in a musical, because imagine you're on the set, you have your choreography down, you have this music blasting, and then the director says action, and you're off, you take off like a balloon in this other dimension. You know, you, you just feel alive. I think all the songs work. There's just an energy that comes off the screen. We'd had three weeks of rehearsal, and everybody was totally, totally into it. We had a soundstage here on the Paramount lot where all the dancers and the actors would meet every day. I would work with the actors on dialogue and how to make that funnier and make it work. And then Pat Birch, the choreographer, would be working with the dancers. They had a great group of dancers, and it was so much fun. We would all get together and warm up and stretch, and Pat Birch would give us exercises. I remember very clearly the rehearsals were tremendously playful. It was a great thrill to be doing this kind of classic movie musical. The dance contest was a lot of fun. We really had a good time doing that. It took us a week to shoot, and we were on location in a real school in downtown LA. That gym was stifling. It was hot. It was really hot. But it really wasn't like work. I mean, even if you wait around for seven or eight hours, it made no difference because we loved being with each other. I love the way it looked. I mean, this is the camera work, and that is really terrific. Originally, my character was not going to dance. That was not part of the plan. It was going to be John and Cha-Cha and the whole thing, and I'd be left out. They call me Cha-Cha, because I'm the best dancer at St. Bernadette's. With the worst reputation. Let's go, Sandy. But when Pat Burt see that I could move one leg in front of the other, she put that little bit in for me. But that wasn't in the original script. Everybody thinks that the dance contest is all sped up because we're moving so quickly. It wasn't. It was that electric, that kind of spirits and energy. The first thing I noticed about setting up shots was that I had only worked in television up until then. And looking in here and seeing this wide angle lens, it looked really cool. I knew I was in the big time. In the case of Grease Lightning, it had a surreal or dreamlike feel. So we ended up having a white background and having the colors be kind of vivid. Grease Lightning was fun. We based it on the Broadway choreography and we just had to heighten it to a, a cinematic dimension. So uh, Pat Birch had more gymnastics going on, the guys jumping over each other and flipping. Pat Birch really made it into a big dance number for Jeff and John. Turning the car from an old car into a, the new spiffy car was just a fabulous idea. And the transition of going from one to the other was him sliding under the car, which seemed like a fun way of making the transition. It was just so full of energy and fun. The premiere, it was great. It was just like a fantasy because to me, it was my first movie and, and to have that kind of an opening was very exciting. There was thousands of people and there was almost a riot. I remember John and I drove up and it was so crazy. The kids were climbing all over the car and there were a lot of people lining the carpet and it was a little chaotic and, and very exciting. 
It was a phenomenon, you know, it was absolutely extraordinary. It was like those premieres of yesteryear when stars would show up and the streets were mobbed with people and the red carpet walking everybody in. It was one of the most exciting nights of my life. I remember just sitting there in that theater and there was this ripple of excitement and then that first big production number, whoosh, it was just like a big wave hitting a beach when you sat in the movie theater. It was really thrilling. The movie was really well received by the audience and the party was great and parties were always great in those days. I started out the premiere with Sandy One. I came in a prom dress, a very pink poofy prom dress, saw the movie and then after the movie I changed into Sandy Two, like a pink lady's spandex version for the party. It was so much fun. We just had such a great time. And we'd really, really dance all night long. You know, Greece is something that only comes along once in a great while. It really was the senior year you always wanted. When I watch it now, I basically see this energy that was there among the cast, uh, the tremendous enthusiasm. They sort of stopped making movies like this after we made it. I mean, I can't think of another big musical since then. I really feel like we made friendships that summer that are there for now and forever. It was just one of those magical times for everybody, because everyone was coming up. This was my first really big movie, and John's really big movie, and Olivia's big movie, and it was all just joyous. It's the most successful film I've been in, probably will ever be in, and that's enough. That's great. You know, I've left, I've left my mark on Celluloid somewhere, and I feel very lucky. I wouldn't trade it for any other movie I've been in because it meant so much to so many people. So I, I'm pretty, pretty proud of it. Oh,